Hello, this is Helen Alexander. I'm going to be sharing the International Sunday School lesson for Sunday, May 8th, 2016. The subject of the lesson today is Grateful Faith. The scriptures come from Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another opportunity to look into your word. And God, we ask you to just speak to us today. Speak to us, Lord God, so that we can hear what it is that you desire that we hear in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. So the subject of this lesson is grateful faith. Today's study focuses on Jesus' encounter with 10 lepers. Praise the Lord. Leprosy was a scaly, rough disease. And anyone with this disease had to live outside of the camp of the Israelites. And they had to cry, unclean, unclean, when they were in the presence of other people. You can read that in Leviticus 13, 45. So in studying this lesson, I read a story um, about Moses' sister, Miriam. And um, I see that sin can be one of the causes of leprosy. Praise the Lord. Miriam, who was Moses' sister, she spoke out against Moses. And the Bible talks about how the Lord punished her. And he caused leprosy to come upon her. And then Moses sought the Lord and prayed for the Lord, for the Lord to deliver her. Glory to God. And he did just that. You can read that in Numbers chapter 12, verse 10. And then there was a story about a man named Gehazi who was punished with leprosy for lying. You can read that in 2 Kings chapter 15, verse 27. Leprosy was a horrible disease. Glory to God. So in today's lesson, Luke recorded that Jesus um, healed 10 lepers, but only one of them returned to thank the Lord Jesus Christ for their miracle. Glory to God. In Luke 17, it says, And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there he met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us. So Jesus met these ten lepers, praise the Lord, and they stood at a distance from him, which was one of the requirements uh, for a person that had leprosy. These men cried unto the Lord Jesus Christ, asking him to have mercy upon them. Lord to God, and that means by the fine, by the divine grace of God to have compassion upon them. There was a call to help, praise the Lord, to help from Jesus. They wanted some help. They needed healing, praise the Lord. They had a need. And as we see in today's study, Nine of these lepers that got healed, um, they needed a fulfillment, and they never returned to say thank you to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no record of them ever returning, even for salvation, glory to God. Isn't that the way it is in many cases today, praise the Lord? Sometimes, even as believers, when God, we seek the Lord wholeheartedly to get a miracle, praise the Lord, and then we forget to come back and to seek his face and thank him with the same energy that we put forth in asking him to do something for us. But the Bible says here, and when we have need of a miracle, we can ask God for anything in his name. If it's according to his will, that he will do it, praise the Lord. But we need to have time to come back and to say thank you. And with these lepers, praise the Lord, God, yet being God and knowing what their actions would be with these nine people. He knew that they would not come back to say thank you. And yet he gave them a miracle. What love God has. Glory to God. He said all souls belong to him. All souls belong to him. But the soul that sinneth it shall die. But he has no respect to persons. And he showed these lepers love. Glory to God. Even though he knew that they would not come back. Verse 14. And when he saw him, when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. So Jesus, praise the Lord, without speaking healing over them or praying over them, <laughs> praying over these leopards to be healed, he just commanded them to go and to show themselves to the priests. Before anybody uh, with leprosy could return to society, 
they had to be examined by a priest and to be, be declared clean before they could enter society again. So these ten lepers went as they were purified. They were purified as they went. Glory to God. Now, miraculously, they were healed. A supernatural miracle performed by the Lord Jesus Christ. They were healed as they went. Obedience is the key here, praise the Lord. If God says to do it, we must just do it without questioning his methods. Look at Naaman. He was a leper. The Bible says that Elisha told him to go wash in the Jordan River. Now, the Jordan River it was at that time a dirty and muddy river. It may still be today, but at that time, it was a dirty, muddy river. But the Bible says here that Elisha told him to go and wash in that river, and he would be made clean. He would be delivered from leprosy. You can read that in 2 Kings chapter 5. But Naaman was angry. <laughs> he got upset with Elisha because one thing, because Elisha wouldn't come outside and pray for him. And the Bible says that he went away in a rage, glory to God. He was mad that Elisha would not come out and pray for him, and he was angry because he did not want to go wash in the Jordan. He would rather go wash in one of the rivers in Damascus, praise the Lord. So he went away in a rage, glory to God. But the Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. The key here is obedience. Obedience is a requirement for a child of God, for everybody. The Bible requires that we obey the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ, praise the Lord. So, one of them, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Notice that this one leper did not um, be as a other's glory to God that never came back to say thank you. But the Bible says that he returned, glory to God. He returned, he turned back, and he gave thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is also our high priest, glory to God. You can read that in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. So he worshiped the Lord, and he praised the Lord with a loud voice, glory to God, for the miracle that he got. His scaly skin was now snoo and smooth, glory to God. Prior to meeting Jesus, this man, this man probably had no hope that he would ever return to society, that he would ever even see any of his family members to be able to sit down and have a meal with them. Glory to God. But the Lord Jesus Christ performed a supernatural miracle on these people. He was a Samaritan, an inhabitant of Samaritan. And the relationship between the Jews and the Samaritans was never good. It was not a good deal with them. Glory to God. They could not get along. Praise the Lord. And you can read about that in 2 Kings chapter 17. However, God will have mercy upon whom he will. He has no respect of persons. So these lepers were like outcasts, praise the Lord. The Lord is even today still delivering outcasts. Those that feel that there's no future ahead. Those that feel that others have abandoned them or separated themselves from them. God is still delivered, glory to God. So the believers can relate to this miraculous healing, praise the Lord, when we think about the healing of our souls, when the Lord Jesus Christ cleanses us from sin. He heals us physically and spiritually as well. On the other side of this, it is a spiritual learning for the believer, glory to God, not to avoid those that are outcasts, those that are still in sin, those that are still held captive by the powers of darkness. Where would I be as a believer if everyone that witnessed to me had been afraid of me or afraid to associate themselves with me, praise the Lord, when they were witnessing to me about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, I would still be lost. <laughs> praise the Lord. Thank God. Thank God for those who witnessed to sinners because that's why Jesus came, glory to God. He was our example, glory to God. Once delivered, we're not to become yoked again with sinners, glory to God, but we can share the love of Jesus, and we have to do it with the right motive, glory to God. Jesus hung around the sinners. That's why he came. He came to save 
those that are lost. Glory to God. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give God glory to God, save this stranger. So look at these nine, lep nine lepers, glory to God. They did not return. Such ingratitude, glory to God. Obviously, they felt that God could heal them. But there is a big difference in believing what God can do for you and believing God as the Savior, the Savior of our souls, glory to God. I thought about a conversation that Jesus had with a crowd of people that followed him. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because you saw the miracles, but because ye did eat the loaves and were filled. You can read that in John 6, 26. Some only followed Jesus to fulfill their needs, glory to God. So they, these nine lepers, they were healed. They went to the priest, praise the Lord. They were healed. They showed themselves to the priest. But after that, they went their own way. They didn't turn back to Jesus like the Samaritan did, glory to God. But because Jesus is God, he knew the nine would never come back. And yet, he showed them love. He gave them a miracle, knowing that they would never return. Glory to God. Another point. The ten leopards started out together. Praise the Lord. There was unity between them. They started out in unison to get their healing. Once they got it, <laughs> it didn't appear that they were still unified. And I say that because the nine went their own way. Glory to God. And I don't see any record in the Bible where they looked for the one that returned to Jesus. They had no idea what had happened to him. Glory to God. So not only did they neglect to return and to tell Jesus, thank you, but obviously they completely made this Samaritan a part of their past. Just a memory. Glory to God. How soon we forget. Verse 19. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. So for those people that were standing around, Jesus indicated that the nine lepers uh, did not return to glorify God. Only this stranger, the Samaritan, returned. But Jesus spoke some powerful words to him. Glory to God. He said that his faith had made him whole. Praise the Lord. That means that he was saved. Glory to God. It resulted in his salvation. Now, not only was he healed physically, but spiritually. His soul had been made clean as well. Sins instantly wiped out. Glory to God. And that is what God does for us as believers. Once we repent, we tell the Lord we're sorry for our sins, that we believe in the death and the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord, Instantly, glory to God, instantly, God wipes out our sins. Oh, yes, he does. The Bible says in Isaiah 43 and 25 that God blots out our sins and remembers them no more. And so we must leave our past in the past. And we must also leave the past of others in the past. An important thing to note here is that the Samaritan had a mind of his own. That's what I got out of this lesson, glory to God. He was not influenced by the people that were around him. The other nine had no influence on his decision to go back and to tell Jesus thank you. He went back alone. He did not allow them to stop him. The takeaway from this for the believer is that sometimes you may have to stand alone. For this leper, it meant the difference between life and death eternally. He went to Jesus alone, glory to God. And through that, he gained eternal life. Hallelujah. I thought about Paul, praise the Lord. He said that Alexander the coppersmith did him much evil. Paul said that no man stood with him. He said, but the Lord strengthened him and delivered him out of the mouth of the lion. You can read that in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. So we must take a stand, even if it means standing alone. If God be for you, who, who can be against you? Glory to God. 
On another occasion, Jesus healed the leper instantly. You can read that in Matthew chapter 8. Praise the Lord. And the disciples were eyewitnesses to that healing. So in today's lesson, the disciples saw Jesus healing these lepers as they went. So these were great teaching moments and learning lessons, not only for the disciples, but for us as believers, that some healings are instant and some are not instant. But the important thing is they will happen. Praise God. When Jesus sent the disciples out to the preach, out to preach the gospel, he told them to heal the lepers. You can read that in Matthew 10 and 8. There is no disease that Jesus cannot heal. The Bible says that the Lord forgives all your iniquities and he heals all your diseases. You can read that in Psalms 103 and 3. We must be grateful for whatever way the Lord chooses to heal us. It is according to his divine will. So whatever way the Lord chooses to heal, we just need to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. But whatever it is, whatever it is we're going through, just tell the Lord thank you. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for this study today. We give you praise. We pray, Lord God, that it has ministered to someone today and that even we will apply these teachings to our lives, that we will be grateful for the things that you do for us. We thank you for it, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.